Hi everybody, it's Stephanie with Planning with Peanutty. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you're joining me today. I'm setting up my micro do-it-yourself planner for March. I am posting this video a little bit late. We went to Go Wild this month and my posting schedule got a bit off. But anyways, I'm going to cover this side of the divider. I made the dividers from a mini Happy Planner, one that had expired. So if you want to see how I set up the micro for the year, check out that video below. But I grabbed a piece of patterned paper. I had this paper left over from my scrapbooking days. I don't even want to say it, but it was 20 years ago. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just going to trace it down to the same size as the filler paper. I didn't really even need to do this because we know the measurements are three by four inches. I also didn't need to do it because this scrapbook paper you could see has half inch measurements on the back. So I could have just cut right on those lines and trusted that it would be three by four. So I'm just going to cut this out. And be careful using sharp objects. You could use a paper trimmer. I just have a pair of scissors here, so that's going to be handy. All right. So once you have your rectangle of pattern paper, you're going to grab your Happy Planner Punch. You can use regular hole punch. Um, but I have the Happy Planner Punch here. You don't want to line it up to the line that comes on the punch because that's sized for mini and classic and big papers. So the micro paper, you need those four holes centered, which makes it a little shorter than that line. So be careful when you're punching it. And that looks like that's going to line up very nicely. So... Yeah, so I'm going to leave it on the discs while I glue it down just to make sure that the pages will still turn. All right, so let me grab, I think I'm just going to use my glue stick today. And I'll put links to all the tools and everything I use in the description below. All right, so I'm just going to come in, add some glue. The glue stick's perfect too because it fits right between the two discs. All right, and leaving it on those discs. I'm just gonna glue it down. There we go. All right, then after we give that a nice firm pressing. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get our monthly inserts. So I have been saving and collecting micro notes paper. It is hard to find now, um, but I was collecting especially the ones that were dot grid or graph. So I just need to pick out one that I think would work with March. I think this kind of peachy color is gonna work best. So I'm just gonna grab like five or six of these. And if you don't have any micro paper, you can make it yourself, any paper you want, and then just cut it down to three inches by four inches. And then you can make your own micro book here, micro planner or a micro notebook. Okay, so five or six of those pages, enough for the monthly view and all the weekly views. All right, so I'm gonna pull off two sheets so that we could do our monthly view. And I'm gonna grab a pen and my ruler All right, and then starting in the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to come in and put a little dot on the bottom either corner of a box or bottom dot. And then counting up six, put another dot, and then it's over five dots or boxes. And I'll put the exact measurement in the description below as well. So if you don't have micro notes paper, I'll give you those exact dimensions so you could draw it out yourself. And then I like to leave a little bit of space up at the top. And then when you're doing the other side of the month, you can just use what you've already drawn as a guide. You don't have to count out the boxes again. 
You could even use the previous month. Like we could have pulled out February and lined that up so you don't have to count once you've done January. But I was going to count it out for you so you can see how I do it. And then I love the Dates and Holidays sticker book, this hot pink one. It has these cute months of the year in this nice uh, kind of script font. I really like this font. And we can just pull March out here. And then I just turn it on its side so it fits. There we go. And then we set that aside for now. Now, that sticker book needs days of the week, but it does not have days of the week. So I have used just letter stickers for the days of the week across the top. But I have these journaling stickers from Cactus Paper Company. And I don't use these days of the week stickers in my journaling. So I'm just going to cut them out. And I don't have room to put all of Monday, all of Tuesday. So I'm just going to cut the abbreviations apart from the day. There we go. Okay, so then on Monday, it'll just say Mun. Tuesday, it'll say Twos, etc. Just let me grab my tweezers. And then I don't want to forget that the monthly view starts on Sunday. You can start it on whatever day you want, but I like the traditional Sunday start. And those just fit nicely across the top there. So back to the dates and holidays sticker book. They have these tiny black numbers, which I love to use in the micro planner. I think it gives it a nice professional look. So I'm going to grab my tweezers again and then making sure I start on the correct day of the week. I'm just going to come in here and date the entire month. Just like so. And away we go. It is a time consuming process, but I do like playing with my planner, especially the micro planner. It's so fun and cute. So I don't mind that it takes a bit of time to set it up. All right, and then for the weekly view, I'm going to grab two more sheets. All right, and this time I thought I would try this Sharpie S gel pen. I thought because it was Sharpie, I don't know, I thought it would work better than the Bic pen. Let me show you. So this one, we're going to count up eight dots or boxes for this weekly view. And then you can make it as wide as you want. And then I'm just going to draw a horizontal layout. Use the other side of the week as a guide. And draw out that horizontal layout. Now the Sharpie S gel pen didn't work as well as the Bic pen because it was like too much ink was coming out. So it would kind of pool um, when I would dot it down. And I found it a little bit messier than that cheaper Bic pen. So I'm going to stick with the Bic pens from now on. If you have a pen you like better, let me know. And then I'm going to use those black numbers again from the Dates and Holidays sticker book to date my weeks. Remembering not to date all eight boxes. Sorry about the focus here. I'm not sure what was happening. It only lasts a second, though. All right, and I don't date that bottom box. Leave that one open for notes or for decorations. Okay, then let's come back and pop these in. Okay, so that monthly view. There we go. Okay, so the back of that divider, you can see, is just that chunk of the mini planner. And I don't want that showing, so I'm going to glue that page down to the inside of my calendar. Now you could decorate both sides of the divider and then reuse them next year. Um, I don't mind. Again, I like doing it, so I don't mind making another one next year, but you could have a decorative or on both sides of the divider and then decorate the other side of the beginning of your month, or maybe have a note page, or maybe it's a bucket list, or maybe it's birthdays. You know, you can put whatever you want. And I like having that calendar on the other side of the divider. There we go. And then our weekly view. Now at the end of the month, I like putting a note page. So I have this lined paper. And then you can see like I did there, maybe add a couple stickers. 
and then pulling that same sheet of journaling stickers. There's this important sticker on here. And then while I was looking at it, I thought these colors went nicely with the filler paper. So maybe I could just use some of these washi strip stickers to decorate my notes page. So I think I'll use this marbled kind of torn washi sticker. I guess it's more like a border sticker. And just trying to line it up there. All right, and then I'm going to use my scissors again, carefully using sharp objects. Just to trim that excess off. All right, and then I'm not going to waste that piece. Let's put that piece on the top. Again, just trying to line it up straight with the paper. There we go. All right, and then I have that important sticker and it's on a paper backing, so it'll show up over that pretty pink marble. Important. And then I also found, I looked at the other sheet that matches to see if there are other stickers I could use to decorate this. And I think this one, Embrace the Journey, we could tuck down here in the bottom. And then that's pretty cute. I think that's going to do it for my note page at the end of the month. I'll pop that back in there. And I don't want the back of that last week to show. And I don't want the back side of that note page. Again, you could add more notes. Um, you could use the backs of those for anything you really want. But I'm just going to glue them together. <laughs> so more glue. Press together on the discs so that I can make sure they still turn. There we go. And then I'll draw out the rest of those weekly views later. And then I'm thinking we could add a little bit of decoration to this March page. So I pulled the seasonal sticker books that I had nearby. I do want one that's kind of St. Patrick's Day kind of spring theme as we're starting spring here. The shamrock looks like maybe it'll be a little too big, but maybe the rainbow And I'm thinking we could have a half rainbow coming out from that edge of the calendar view. So let me just grab my tweezers and play around with where that would go. So I think we could tuck it down here at the bottom. And then I don't want it going over into the 27th. I just want it to stop right at that line. So I'm going to grab my cutting mat from the Dollar Tree and my ruler and craft knife. So again, carefully using sharp objects, and I'm just going to lightly cut just hard enough to go through the sticker, not through the paper and not through the cutting mat, just very lightly. And then once I make sure that that stickers peels up easily, all right, and then I'm going to save the other half of that sticker. And then looking at that page, let me see if I can get a close up view for you guys. Okay, so looking at this page, I didn't like how far apart that March was sitting from the rainbow. And it just looked like too much space still left there. Like the rainbow's too small or something. And so I spent five minutes looking through my sticker books, trying to see if there was a different spring kind of sticker that would work better there. And I finally decided not to add a different decoration sticker, but just to move March down a little bit to hide that there was so much white space there. So I'm just going to peel March up carefully because I did, I was pretty certain when I put it down and did not hold back with how firmly I pressed it down. So carefully peeling it back up and the clear stickers do work better when you try to peel them back up than the paper ones tend to tear either the sticker or the paper underneath it. But the clear ones I have a little better luck with. And then I'm just going to lower it down. And then I think that works better. I think it camouflages how much of that white space was left there and it doesn't make that rainbow look so ridiculously small and I think that's gonna work so there's our divider let me pop in my dashboards I did make these dashboards from a larger dashboard it was really easy just a pair of scissors and a marker so if you want to see how I did that check out the video in the description below and then let's take a look 
Okay, so we have our divider. Let me give you a better monthly view. There's our close up. I love the cute little days of the week across the top and then the nice month. And I think it has a very nice professional look, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Click like if you like this video, subscribe to see more. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.